Hello, you absolute legends. For the past three years, I've covered some amazing world records that speedrunners have achieved on this channel. I simply love learning about different games and the players that are able to do incredible things. But today, we are going to do something a little bit different. Today, we will be talking about a world record that I achieved myself. In fact, we will be talking about the greatest world record that I personally set in my entire speedrunning career, which spanned over 20 years. Normally, I don't really like going into detail about my own achievements. I'd much rather focus on the accomplishments of others. But in this case, I'm going to make an exception, and I think I have a pretty good reason. In my lifetime, I've achieved 343 world records, with 135 of them being untied. Out of those 135 new world records, the choice of which is the greatest is an easy one. It's not even close. Of all of the untied world records I've set in both GoldenEye and Perfect Dark, only a single one remains that has yet to be matched by another player. On the 2nd of December 2017, I achieved a time of 52 seconds on Damn Agent, the first level in GoldenEye on the easiest difficulty setting. Recently, it became the longest lasting untied world record currently on the ranks, and also entered the top 10 longest lasting untied world records of all time. Whenever this happens, a world record becomes a target, as people look to become the first to tie a well-known and prestigious record. And in the case of Dam 52, that's exactly what's happened. One of the best GoldenEye players in the world, a player by the name of Carl Magnus Wall, has made it his mission to tie Dam 52. He is already well known for setting some of the best world records in the game, and if anyone was to go after a time like this, it's definitely him. Over the past five months, he has already spent 400 hours in his quest, and he still hasn't managed to match the record I set in 2017. But the inevitable is coming, and so long as he keeps playing, he will do it eventually. When Dam 52 is tied, the last of my untied records will be slayed. I honestly don't know if I will ever set another world record again, so this really might be the last time we see my initials standing alone on the rankings. In celebration of this imminent event, and to shine a light on Carl Magnus Wall's efforts, we will take a look at the history of Dam Agent, and to learn why this record is not only very special to me on a personal level, but also why it's just so damn hard to achieve. I really hope you enjoy. Now Legends, I need you to settle down and be serious for a moment because April is Testicular Cancer Awareness Month. Now if you know me well, you know that I'm always going on about how you should make your balls look as neat and tidy as possible in order to impress any potential suitors. But you should also make sure they are healthy as well. And that is why today's video sponsor Manscaped has partnered with the Testicular Cancer Society to help you take care down there. So here's the drill. Step 1. Use the Lawnmower 4.0 to trim away the disgusting tropical forest you have down there. It's waterproof so I use it in the shower and it really only takes around 2 minutes to make everything look good. Then, at least once a month, you should check yourself for testicular cancer. And you can find out how at manscaped.com slash TCS. So get yourself a lawnmower today and go to manscaped.com slash TCS to learn how to do some checks that every man must do. And of course, if you use the code TCSJOBS, you'll also get 20% off, plus free shipping. Dam on the Agent difficulty is likely the first experience we all had when we played Goldeneye for the first time. The most memorable part of that experience for me was picking up the sniper rifle in the tower near the beginning and summarily taking out every guard in the level from a distance. The level teaches us everything we need to know about how the game works, from how to press buttons and shoot locks, to how guards behave, including running for alarms. It even has a moving vehicle, which is a strange anomaly that serves no purpose and only appears on this one level. On Agent, there is but one objective, bungee jump from platform. All you need to do is reach the center of the dam and take that leap of faith. The level design, at least the parts we actually need to get through on the Agent difficulty, is relatively simple. Since the game's release up until today, the basic path that players take to reach the end has remained exactly the same. 
videos of the most ancient records are extremely rare. Back then, not only was it difficult and expensive to attain capture cards, but even if you did make videos, most internet connections were far too slow to allow for larger file types. So the videos that we do have are of very poor quality. The oldest world record video we have available is a run of 56 seconds by the player Wes McKinney. Wes was not only a world-class runner who sat at around second place for most of his short career, but he also ran and maintained the official world rankings. Everything was done manually so we would need to email Wes our times and often wait months for them to be uploaded. This was well before the GoldenEye and Perfect Dark speedrunning community became known as the Elite. In the oldest days, the rankings were hosted on a website called GoldenEye Extreme. For those immersed in the world of software development, the name Wes McKinney might sound familiar. After moving on from GoldenEye in the early 2000s, Wes devoted himself to programming and created the world-renowned Python Pandas project. Nowadays, Wes is a highly successful programmer, entrepreneur, and author. But back then, he was just a 13-year-old kid playing Nintendo, as most of us were. The video of Wes's run of 56 seconds from 1998 is pretty poor quality, so I'm going to reenact it for the purpose of us learning the level. As I mentioned before, Damn Agent is very basic. For most of the run, we are simply concerned with tight corners and accurate lines without straying off the shortest path. After the starting section and heading through a tunnel, we make our way into a large opening before the level's first obstacle, the double gate. A button controls each of the gates, and usually in order for one of the gates to open, the other must be closed. However, the developers programmed a guard into the game that walks through these gates, and when this guard attempts to open one of them, it can bypass the need for the other to be closed. The timing of the guard's path makes it so that he opens the gate more or less as we get there. So when this guard opens the second gate, the first is still open, which allows us to run through. That being said, one oddity that was known about since right from the beginning is that if you press the button to open the gate yourself, the gate opens a little bit quicker. The reason for this wouldn't be known for another 20 years, but in practice, players always hit the button before going through. Once through the double gates, we make our way to the second obstacle. On the way, we pass a guard who, upon seeing us, runs for an alarm. If the alarm is activated, it alerts a couple of guards inside the building. But by the time the guard reaches the alarm, we are long gone, so it doesn't really impact anything. Once through a small gate next to the alarm, we come to another gate with a lock. This lock must be shot or the gate won't open. Thankfully, it only takes one bullet to remove it. Beyond the locked gate is a simple run to the final platform where we jump off the dam to finish the level. All in all, this is a very basic speedrun, and really not much has changed over the past 20 years. In 1999, a time of 55 seconds would be achieved by multiple players, though we don't have an accurate record of who the first person was. We also don't have any videos from 1999. The first recorded runs of 55 show up in the year 2000, including one from yours truly, though unfortunately, this video has been lost. In early 2001, the world record was still sitting at 55 seconds, and was tied by around 30 people. Surprisingly, at the time, people considered 55 seconds to be as low as the record could go. One of the oldest traditions on the GoldenEye speedrunning forums is for players to try and predict what the best possible times are on each stage. In one topic from late 2000, every single person said that 55 was the best that one could do. But on the 14th of May 2001, Nintendo legend Steven Schwartzes shocked the community by claiming a time of 54 seconds. In typical Steven fashion, he had no video of his claim, which is an interesting thing to note about this particular person. He was celebrated as one of the greatest GoldenEye players ever and claimed 37 untied world records in his career, but never had video proof for a single one of them. At the end of his career in 2002, he was caught lying about multiple times, and he left the community forever. However, he did know a lot about the game, and in his forum post announcing his new world record, he outlined an optimization that made it possible. The main improvement centered around the lock shot. 
The lock is really small and admittedly hard to hit while running, so previously what players would do is switch from right strafe to left strafe at the small gate before the lock in order to get a better angle on their approach. They would then momentarily break strafe to make the lock shot easier, and switch back to right strafe as they went through. The problem with this is that switching strafe directions is really slow, and loses about 0.2 seconds every time you do it. When you combine these strafe changes with an overly safe lock shot, players were losing at least half a second in this section alone. In his post, Stephen explained that this should all be done in right strafe, stating, Here is where most of you go wrong. Keep strafing right C to lock gate. Hold a straight line to the lock itself and aim up. Now close to the gate, press hard right and shoot lock off and press B in one fluid motion. You should strafe out of the gate as if the gate wasn't even there. This is the most important thing for getting a 54. Even with the lack of video proof, Steven's explanation was enough to create an avalanche of new personal bests, with at least 10 people tying the world record with their own runs of 54 seconds within a week. And I was among them. 54 turned out to be a rather easy record, and within a year, a total of 36 had achieved it. One funny thing to note about Steven's post, however, is that he also mentioned he was switching weapons throughout his run. He thought this might have made him run faster, as the game was noticeably slowing down when he was doing so. Ironically, we later learned that slowing the game down like this is actually slower. But it's pretty funny to look at runs from this time trying to mimic Steven's strategy by switching weapons throughout their run. 2002 would prove to be an incredibly influential year for GoldenEye speedrunning, and in my opinion, marked a split between the ancient players who were resistant to change and the modern generations who were much more open to new ideas. Personally, I was definitely in the former category. Late 2001 was my peak in GoldenEye speedrunning. At one point in August, I was ranked first in total time in every category, and came within 20 points of overall champion. To this day, my biggest regret in speedrunning was not knuckling down and doing what I had to do to become champion. I had the skill, I had the potential, but what I lacked was self-belief. And looking back, I don't really understand why. In 2002, I switched over to Perfect Dark and became world champion relatively easily. I never had any confidence issues in that game, but with Goldeneye, I always considered myself to be a second-rate player. This led me to not even try to get world records on certain levels, because I never thought I even had a chance. It seemed like players such as Wouter Janssen and Randy Bukema could do anything, but I was more of a specialist who shied away from certain challenges. Though as good as Wouter and Randy were, nothing could prepare me for the behemoth that was Brian Bosshart. Two things happened in 2002 that changed GoldenEye speedrunning forever. The first is the discovery of Lookdown, the realization that looking at the ground produces slightly faster times. And the second thing was the entrance of Brian Bossart to the GoldenEye community. I didn't like either of these occurrences. I didn't like Lookdown because after playing the game for years the standard way, the idea of looking at the ground was really unappealing. And I resented Brian Bossart because from my immature, insecure perspective, he was a new player that was simply taking advantage of new strategies like Lookdown in order to beat world records that were set legitimately. A perfect example was Surface 1 on the Secret Agent difficulty. As part of the strategy, we collect a grenade launcher so that we can quickly destroy four locks at the end of the level. Without the grenade launcher, we'd have to shoot out each lock individually, which is much slower. But in the past, no one had utilized the grenade launcher for anything else. That was until July 2001, when I pioneered a technique to give yourself boosts. This was a lot more difficult, but also much faster. With this technique, I achieved a new world record of 1 minute and 53 seconds, which was a really strong record at the time and wouldn't be matched for over a year. But as soon as Lookdown was discovered, Brian Bossart used it to beat my record with a time of 1.52. And the worst part is that he didn't even need to use grenade boosts, which increases the difficulty substantially. Lookdown essentially allowed him to get a faster time with less effort, which upset me and it would take almost 15 years before my style of grenade boosting would be fully utilized on that level to get a new world record. Eventually, my attitude did change, but Lookdown almost single-handedly made me lose interest in the game, and I wouldn't seriously speedrun the game again for over 10 years. 
Brian posted about his new Surface One World Record on the 27th of September 2002, which is a date that will go down in GoldenEye history as one of the most important. But not because of his Surface One time, it was another record that he achieved on the same day that would blow everyone away. It was a time of 53 seconds on Damn Agent. While it could be argued that Brian's Surface One record was weak and simply a product of a new strategy, the same could certainly not be said about Damn Agent 53 seconds. This record was a monster. Not only did it take over two years before anyone else could match it, but it went on to become the longest lasting world record in GoldenEye history. Brian wouldn't become GoldenEye champion for at least another year, but his damn agent record was well ahead of its time and was a precursor to his later domination. In fact, I still remember exactly where I was when I heard the news. That's how big of a deal it was. Before Brian's 53, I don't even remember anyone else considering the possibility. Brian did use Lookdown for most of the level, but there was some nuance to its implementation. For example, in the tunnel near the beginning of the stage, Brian stopped using Lookdown at the corner before the double gate. This is necessary because if you keep looking down, the guard opens the gate extremely late. The reason for this is that the guard that opens the gate is loaded and starts walking along his path when you reach the corner in the tunnel. However, if you look down, he gets loaded much later. Another thing to note about this guard is that the speed at which he opens the gate is dependent on RNG. So sometimes he will open it very quickly, and sometimes it will be half a second slower. The variation isn't huge, but when going for 53, these small discrepancies were really starting to matter. And in Brian's case, his gate was extremely quick. To match the old world record of 54, you really didn't need much luck. You would essentially be guaranteed the time if you played well. But with 53, everything became important, even things like getting boosted by guards. On Damn Agent, there are three primary locations that one could hope to get shot by a guard from behind in order to gain a small boost in speed. The first is at the very beginning from this guard here. The second is in the large area before the double gate, and the third is from this guard here on the way to the lock shot after the double gate. Not every boost is equal, however. A great example is the second boost towards the double gate. If you watch any run of 53 seconds before 2017, you'll notice that in almost every case, the player has to wait for a brief moment before they can get through. If your line to the gate is good, you will be able to get there before the guard has a chance to open it. So in all of these cases, if you get boosted on your way to the gate, you won't save any time because you'll have to wait anyway. The first and third boosts are a different story. You definitely can gain some time here, but it's not as much as one might think. Generally, a boost from a guard will save approximately 0.3 seconds, but this only applies if you are getting boosted perfectly in the same direction you are running. Guards can shoot you from the side, from the front, or at any angle, and the amount of time you'll save depends on where the guard is standing when they hit you. Unfortunately, the first and third boosts aren't perfect, and the guards are hitting you from an angle of around 45 degrees, or possibly even worse depending on when they shoot you. This ultimately works out to a time save of around 0.2 seconds on average at best. On his run, Brian got the very first boost, and almost every 53 after his had at least one boost. 53 ended up being so tight that it was almost impossible to get without a boost. But it was doable, and over the next seven years, a couple of players did manage to do it. The most notable was a run by Dan Chavona in 2005. This run was seen as the pinnacle of Damn Agent play. The lines were fantastic, the gate was fast, and there were no guard boosts. After the lock shot, he looked up instead of down. This is because if we look down here, we don't just see the ground, we end up loading the entire dam below. So the game runs a bit smoother if we look up. Dan's boostless run was definitely a very high 53, likely a 53.9. If we add in the two potential boosts, his run could have theoretically been a mid-53. But with no other known time saves to include, this is still light years away from 52. And it's for this reason that 53 seconds was basically considered the max, the lowest the level would ever go. However, over the next 15 years, there were two breakthroughs that gave hope that lower may indeed one day happen.
The first breakthrough was in 2010, when it was discovered that by using two controllers and the 2.2 or 2.4 control styles, which we simply call 2.x, you can start levels in full speed. Normally it takes Bond around 3 seconds to reach his max speed, but with 2.x, you can start with max speed immediately. This ends up being a lot more difficult because it means you have to play the entire level with two controllers, but if you can do it, it saves around 0.35 seconds. Some players did continue to go for 53 seconds using one controller, but slowly over time, more and more people began to realize how much easier 53 seconds was using two. With 2.x, 53 seconds became very easy, and it was one of the first times that I achieved when I came back to GoldenEye speedrunning in 2012 after my 10-year hiatus. I had moved over to Perfect Dark exclusively, where a lookdown was a less of an impactful strategy. But 10 years later in 2012, I realized that I still loved the game, and I really wanted to give speedrunning GoldenEye another go. By this stage, I had dropped all the way down to 39th on the ranks, and I would spend the next two years clawing my way back up to a respectable position in the top 10. But as was the case over a decade ago, I still didn't consider myself a top tier player, and neither did anyone else. I did achieve a couple of new untied world records after coming back, like 35 seconds on Cradle Double O Agent in 2014, and Streets Agent 111 in 2016, but these times weren't particularly difficult or memorable. Cradle 35 was extremely overdue, and Streets 111 was a product of a new strategy that was quickly tied by other players within days. Perfect Dark was always a different story. I was world champion multiple times, and definitely had records that I could look back on and be proud of. The best example being 25 seconds on War Agent, which is still by far the longest lasting record in the game's history. But with Goldeneye, I really didn't have anything that stood out, which just fed into my already existing self-doubt. What I couldn't have predicted is that in 2017, 18 years after first speedrunning Goldeneye, my best records were yet to come. And the final piece of the puzzle that was needed was the second breakthrough that was made on Damn Agent. The discovery of 2.x essentially made 53 seconds on Damn Agent a trivial time to achieve, and by 2017, a total of 87 people had achieved it. However, just because 53 was easy, that didn't mean 52 seconds was realistic or even possible. If you took the best case scenario of using 2.x, getting a boost at the start, getting the fastest gate, and getting a boost after the gate, that still only added up to a very, very low 53. There was only one person crazy enough to even attempt to go for 52, which was the player Illu, who in January of 2016 did a 24-hour stream of purely damn agent 52 attempts. Needless to say, he wasn't successful. Looking back, he never really stood a chance. The strategy he was using just wasn't fast enough. On the positive side, Illu's attempts did go a long way in bringing more awareness to the discussion though, and later in the year, the player Luke Scalaz created a forum post announcing a $500 bounty for anyone that could get 52. In this topic, there was some discussion about possible optimizations, like alerting extra guards to try and get more boosts, though nothing really panned out. There was one very interesting post, however, by the player Typosaur, who realized that the speed at which the guard that opens the double gate is loaded will differ depending on the line you take inside of the tunnel. Obviously, the quicker the guard is loaded, the sooner he will open the gate. Typosaur discovered that if you were to take a wider line and go to the left of the guard before the corner where the gate guard is loaded, he will on average load around 0.2 seconds quicker than if you were to take a tight line and go on the inside of the guard. He even programmed a bot on emulator to simulate 300 runs to collect data. This works because if you take a wider line, you can see around the corner sooner, thus loading the guard. While the speed at which the guard opens the gate is always random, this was still an important discovery because it showed that we have at least some control over how fast the gate could potentially open. In practice, however, this didn't have much of an impact as many players were already taking a wider line in the tunnel, including Brian's original 53 and Chervoni's boostless 53. 
So this was a good thing to know, but didn't save any extra time. But then in 2017, something impactful was found. A way to load the gate guard even faster. In a topic created in early 2017 called Dam 52 Discussion, several players were investigating the potential of getting another guard behind the double gates to come and open them. This would theoretically be done by shooting through walls that were unloaded in order to alert him. This investigation was spearheaded by Aaron Morgan, who tested a wide variety of different variables to try and make it work. Ultimately, he failed in producing a viable strategy, but several months later in May, he noticed something else. He realized that the gate guard loaded slightly earlier if you were looking up at an angle when you reached the corner in the tunnel. He found that the perfect lookup angle was 40 degrees, and you needed to go out wide instead of hugging the corner. Using this technique, you can load the guard approximately 0.23 seconds quicker than with no lookup at all. There was just one catch. Because you have to go out wide for the turn, you actually end up getting to the gate much slower. So in the event that you do get the fastest gate, you can't take full advantage of it. The only way to get the full 0.23 time save was to get a boost towards the gate. This wasn't seen as a big problem though, what was most important is that now we could confidently say that Dam 52 was possible if everything went our way. With the first and third boost saving around 0.4 seconds, 2.x saving 0.35 seconds, and the new guard load saving 0.23 seconds, this all added up to a full second of potential time save. With Dam Agent 53, now almost 15 years old, beating it would be a huge deal. And with this new strategy, you would think that everyone was rushing out to be the one to make history. But this didn't happen. There was only a single player that actually put real effort into going for 52, and that player was me. I saw Dam 52 as an opportunity to finally achieve something in this game that everyone could be proud of, and would leave a lasting mark on the community. I still remembered how important Dam 53 was when Brian achieved it 15 years ago, and this was my chance to truly become a part of GoldenEye history. But this was easier said than done. To really understand why no one else went for 52, even though it was clearly possible, we have to understand the odds of everything falling into place. The harsh reality is that in order to get Dam 52, I would need the luckiest run that has ever happened in the history of the game. Let's start with the boosts. Getting a boost depends on several factors. The animation a guard chooses, the speed at which he reacts, and the length of time he decides to shoot at you. It's very hard to calculate exact odds for a boost because there are multiple things at play and is even affected by your angle of movement in relation to the guard. All that being said, it's safe to say that the chance of getting a specific boost is around 1 in 10. A run of 52 seconds would likely require 3 boosts, so the chances of getting all 3 is approximately 1 in 1000. Then we need to consider how fast the double gate will be opened by the guard. As stated before, this is completely random. For a long time we had no real clue why it was random, but last year the player White Ted was able to produce an explanation. To put it simply, the guard will only open the gate when his tick counter reaches a multiple of 10. This tick counter increases by 1 every frame, and its initial value is random. This ultimately means that when he reaches the gate, it could take 1 frame or 10 frames before he opens it. The reason that pressing the button makes the gate open earlier is because the guard actually does two things. The first thing he does is start closing the other gate. Then, once that gate is closing, he can open the second gate. When we press the button, this closes the other gate, which means that the guard no longer needs to do that. In the double gate section, the game runs at around 20 frames per second, so every single extra frame costs 0.05 seconds. A time of 52 almost certainly requires the fastest gate, which at 1 in 10 gives us an overall chance of 1 in 10,000 if you want the fastest gate plus 3 boosts. 
One in 10,000 odds are already pretty bad, but it gets even worse. Remember way back near the beginning of the video, I mentioned there was a guard after the double gates that runs for an alarm? I also said that this didn't really affect anything, which it doesn't if you want a time of 53 seconds or higher. But when it comes to a time of 52 seconds, suddenly he becomes more annoying than ever. Around two years ago, I made a video talking about Runway Agent and the new record of 21 seconds. This occurred after a breakthrough realizing that killing two guards with a grenade ended up saving around 0.15 seconds. The time of 21 seconds was largely thought to be impossible, but this slight optimization ultimately made it possible. Killing these guards saved time because the game has to keep track of guard movements, and with more guards chasing Bond, more processing power is required, thus slowing down the game. On Dam, the exact same thing can happen, but it depends on how fast the guard running to the alarm reacts to you and starts running. If he is slow, then by the time he activates the alarm, you are already past the lock shot gate. If that's the case, the guards inside the building are not activated and do not chase Bond. But if he reacts quickly and the alarm goes off before you're through the gate, the guards are alerted and start chasing you. If the guards do chase you, by the time you reach the end of the level, you've already lost at least a tenth of a second. And that's not the only issue with a fast alarm either. When the alarm is activated and the guards are alerted, there is a large momentary drop in the frame rate. The lock shot itself is a frame perfect trick, so any disruption to the frame rate can make it impossible to time correctly. Though realistically, even if you do manage to hit the lock, you are probably going to lose too much time to get 52 anyway. In my experience, the chance of getting a late alarm is approximately 1 in 3. Now, our odds of everything coming together is around 1 in 30,000. Then we have to factor in the chance of bad luck happening as well, like getting back boosted by a guard or having a particularly bad frame rate which can randomly cost you tenths of a second for no discernible reason. In the end, the chance of having everything go your way is probably somewhere between 1 in 50,000 to 1 in 100,000. The luck required is unbelievable. 52 would be the luckiest GoldenEye speedrun ever by far. It's for this reason that no one wanted to even try because they knew how ridiculous it was. And it's also for this reason that I knew I had to go for it. This was my chance to finally cement myself in GoldenEye lore forever, and make up for the fact that I was too lazy and too scared to get GoldenEye Champion back in 2001. For the very first time in my GoldenEye career, I was really going to try and put in my full effort. I studied the level meticulously, making sure my movement was perfect. When a speedrun requires this much luck, you need to be able to play perfectly every single time. You could play for 1,000 hours and only get a single chance, so you need to be damn sure that you can do it right when the time comes. As fate would have it, I got particularly lucky. It only took me 250 hours over 6 months before I had my first chance. Between May and December of 2017, I would spend most of that time grinding and researching Damn Agent, but I would never have everything come together until near the end of the year. Entering December, Damn Agent was now by far the most tied record in the game's history, with 127 people holding it. And on the 2nd of December 2017, this happened. But you were good anyway. You, I'm, I'm not I'm only joking around, man. I'm not like... Being serious. <laughs> that was another Greg. Ah, uh, Greg, one more. What a run. I'll just be happy knowing that I've clutched that.
Oh, what a run. Fuck. I can't even play anymore tonight after that. It's, I don't know. This run is for all intents and purposes, perfect. You really couldn't ask for anything better. I had three boosts, the fastest gate, and a late alarm, combined with very low lag throughout the run. I can't even describe the feeling I had when going for the lock shot, because I immediately knew that it was never going to get any better than this. And if I missed, there was a real chance I would never get the opportunity again. After the third boost, I basically lost the ability to think or have conscious control over what I was doing. I was basically a deer in headlights, running completely on autopilot. And shockingly, I did the lock shot perfectly, which admittedly was a fluke. I had done it a million times before, but there was no way I should have been able to do it this time with so much pressure. I was extremely lucky. My reaction was insane and caught the attention of gaming journalists everywhere, and it even appeared in mainstream news articles. I had people at work who I'd never told about my speedrunning come and congratulate me because they'd heard it on the news or the radio. However, my reaction wasn't just about getting a good time. This was the result of loving and playing a game for almost two decades and for the first time achieving something that I was truly proud of. And what made it even more intense is the fact that even with a seemingly perfect run, 52 was never guaranteed. I really didn't know what the final time would be, and to see 52 come up on screen was truly jarring. Achieving 52 seconds on Damn Agent gave me a sense of confidence in the game that I'd never had before, and it's directly responsible for me going on to set the best world records of my career in the following year. I ultimately beat 4 out of the 5 longest lasting records in the game, something I'd never thought I would be able to do. The records I would end up achieving afterwards were good, but they are still nothing compared to Damn 52. They've all been tied by other players, but Damn remains unmatched. And it's now the longest lasting untied world record currently on the ranks, and the ninth longest lasting of all time. It's also the final world record that I've personally set that remains untied. Of course, this means that now Dam 52 is a massive target, and in November of last year, there was one player who decided to take up the challenge. Carl Magnus Wall is one of the strongest speedrunners currently playing the game. He has the second most number of world records and has set some of the strongest records currently on the ranks, including an untied sweep on Surface 1. Carl had teased the idea of going for Dam 52 for years, but in November, his attempts became official. Carl certainly has the skill, but Dam Agent requires a lot more than that. It needs consistency and a whole lot of patience. 170 hours into his grind on January 3rd of this year, he had his first potential run. He got the first boost, the second boost, and a fast gate. And then this happened. Okay. Okay. <laughs> oh no. The alarm went off just as he was about to take the lock shot, causing him to miss. Though even if he did hit the lock, the early alarm probably cost him 52 anyway, but it would still have been very close. Three months later on the 14th of April, after another 180 hours of grinding, he would get his second potential run. By this stage, he had duped 53 seconds well over 1,000 times, and at 350 hours total, it was now officially his longest grind ever. And then, this happened. There we go. 
Come on. Come on. Early alarm! I got fucked by the early alarm again! I wasn't even nervous! Dude, I got lagged out of a 52. I swear to God. <laughs> An early alarm cost him his chance. As of today, Carl has spent 400 hours playing for this time, and it's impossible to say how much longer it will take. But I want you all to do me a favor. Please go and follow him on Twitch and watch his attempts. When he does finally get 52, it's going to be a very special moment, and I want as many people to witness it as possible. When Carl or someone else does get 52, it's going to be a very bittersweet moment for me. I will be extremely happy for them because I know how special the record is, but I will also be a bit sad because having an untied world record in one of my favorite games of all time is a pretty cool feeling. But hey, who knows, maybe in another 15 years I will achieve my greatest world record yet. As always, thank you so much for watching, you legends. I hope you are having a fantastic day, and I will see you in the next video.